Hey you guys, I have a question for you. What's the difference between fiction and nonfiction? That's right. Fiction is fake. It's, it tells a story. We have characters with problems and solutions. Nonfiction gives us what? Information, right? It's real information. So I have a book for you because I know you've been reading a lot of fiction books, which are awesome and usually my favorite. But sometimes nonfictions are my favorite because I'm learning while I'm enjoying a good book. And this one has some amazing pictures that I think that you'll really like. So this is a nonfiction book called What Do You Do With a Tale Like This? We can go ahead and predict what this story is going to be about. Even though it's not a story story with um, characters, we can decide what is this text going to be about. So let's just look at our front cover and our title and let's predict. So what do you think this book is going to be about? Maybe how this animal uses their tail. Perfect. All right. Let's see if we're right and we may have to change it while we read and that's okay. All right, this book is by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page, and it's won a Caldecott Honor Award, which means it's been awarded for its great information and pictures. All right, here we go. What do you do with a tail like this? Animals use their noses, ears, tails, eyes, mouths, and feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book, you can find out more about these animals. What do you do with a nose like this? If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. If you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. If you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. If you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. So I'm going to change my prediction because I thought it was just about this tail. Because it says, what do you do with a tail like this? So I thought it was just this tail. But I'm realizing that this book is going to give me information about lots of different animal body parts, animal body types. So interesting. Let's keep going. What do you do with ears like this? Do you have a guess about any of these animals' ears? Maybe a whale? Let's see. If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep you cool. Hmm, I didn't know that. If you're a bat, you see with your ears. They use something called echolocation to help them know where they are and where they're going. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. That's funny. What if you did that instead of plugging your nose in your mouth? If you're a cricket, you hear with your ears that are on your knees. Have you ever heard crickets chirping? They use their knees to make that sound. If you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. That's very interesting. What do you do with a tail like this? You see a skunk and a lizard from our cover. Maybe a giraffe, maybe a lobster. Let's find out. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. If you're a skunk, you lift your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on its way. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. Have you ever seen that? That freaks me out, but it's pretty cool that they break off so that you can, the lizard can get away and you're left with the little piece of tail instead of catching the lizard. I was wrong. You guys probably knew what this was. If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. 
And I bet you guys are familiar with this one. What do you think the monkey does with his tail? I didn't realize it was a monkey from the other page. Hangs on, right? If you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. Kind of use it like another extra arm, huh? What do you do with eyes like these? I see a few you might know about. If you are an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high in the sky. If you're a chameleon, you look two ways at once. That would be cool. How could you, what could you see if you could see this way and that way? If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. I think I'd like to have that one even more than the chameleon. Above and below the water, sneaky. If you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. Ew, gross. If you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. Bush babies must be nocturnal, which means they come out at night. What do you do with feet like this? Do you have any predictions? Maybe a monkey of some sort, maybe a bird or duck of some sort. We are close. If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. How funny. If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance. If you're a water strider, you walk on water. That's cool. If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. You guys know about those, huh? If you're a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. What do you do with a mouth like this? I don't know about those. We'll see. If you're a pelican, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. If you're an egg-eating snake, you use your mouth to swallow eggs larger than your head. If you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. If you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. Look at that. If you're an archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. How clever of an adaptation is that? I'm having a connection to science when I learned about adaptations and how animals have certain adaptations to help them eat or stay safe. And that's the end of our book, but you can learn a little bit more about each of these animals. I won't read all of it, but I'll give you a few things. So this says the platypus is a very unusual animal and lives in streams, ponds, rivers in Australia. It's a mammal, but it does lay eggs. This is the platypus with its flat bill. The hyena found in Africa and parts of Asia is usually thought as a scavenger, though hyenas are scavengers at times. They are also accomplished hunters working in packs and to pull down grazing animals that are much larger than themselves. So they're like a big, big dog almost. The world's largest land animal is the African elephant. He can stand 13 feet tall and weigh more than 14,000 pounds. That's very, very heavy. The American alligator is found in swamps and rivers in the southern United States. Alligators grow to be 14 feet long and weigh as much as 1,000 pounds. I do not want to run into him. The star-nosed mole has 22 fleshy fingers on the end of its nose. The yellow-winged bat, like all bats, make a constant series of clicks or chirps as it flies. Most of these sounds are pitched too high for humans to hear. The sounds bounce off or echo off of nearby objects. By listening to the echoes, a bat can maneuver in the dark 
avoid obstacles, and even find and catch the flying insects it eats. These are usually only 14 inches, so they're about a little longer than a foot. The field cricket's ears are on its two front legs. Opening in the cricket's hard outer coverings lead to chambers inside each leg. By pointing its body and its ears in different directions, the cricket can tell where a sound is coming from. They're very small. They're only about three-fourths of an inch long, so pretty tiny. The antelope jackrabbit is actually a hare, a close relative of rabbits. It has very long ears up to a third of its body length and lives in the hot desert climate of the American Southwest. Its large ears help it stay cool by radiating excess body heat. These are usually grow up to two feet long. So these rabbits are pretty tall. The hippopotamus is easily sunburned and spends much of its time under water. Interesting, it's a sunburn. These large animals, nine feet long, and weigh 3,000 pounds. The ears of the humpback whale are visible only as small openings in the whale's head. Whales need streamlined bodies that move easily through the water, and external ears would slow them down. That's why they're like holes instead of ears like our ears. The striped skunk is found throughout much of North America. Like other skunks, it has the ability to spray attackers with a foul-smelling, eye-stinging liquid. The giraffe is the world's tallest animal. The scorpion, you're, um, you guys know scorpions very well. Some can grow to three feet long. That's so scary and gross. Today, scorpions grow, oh, they used to. Used to, used to, used to. Now, they grow only up into about eight inches, so like about the, that long, but still scary. The spider monkey can use its tail like a fifth hand. The end of its tail has a patch of bare skin with a special groove that helps it grasp things. Wow, I found out lots of information from this book, which means that I remember that it's nonfiction because it's giving me information. So, what do you do with a tail like this? Taught me all about different animals' um, body parts and what they do with them and how special they are. What special um, feature would you like to have if you could pick one? I think I'd like to have those four eyes that can see above and underwater. What about you? All right, I hope you have a great rest of your day, you guys.